What up guys, Jason Guyman here, and tonight I'm going to hit on something of why you need to be charging three to $400 per hour, and I know some of you are going to say, well, you can't get that in my area, but I'm going to hit on this as a little bit different than what you would normally think of what I normally hit on this, and so I am going to hit on this as the aspect of why you need to charge three to four hundred dollars an hour so that way you can grow a business right we are in business to grow a business not do things for free and so my goal is is to show you not just be a one-man band but how you can grow and scale your business now you can if you're going to do this as a grow and scale you need to charge the three to four hundred dollars an hour even as your individual self and why you need to be charging this i know a lot of times we think of oh i don't need to charge that because i just need this or i just need to get to this point and so that is why i'm going to hit on tonight i've actually kind of got a slide point slide presentation here if i can get it up and running and so i know it's not a hundred percent where i want it to be at but i'm going to be at least be able to get you to understand of why we need to be able to charge what we charge so this week i've actually just got back from new york i went to new york on um, i got back thursday night we built the truck in four days or three days and so that is what i wanted to hit on a little bit i got to go out and see rick we built the truck we had issues we were over, over uh, able to overcome those issues and so from there it was a good day and so we had a good time i got lots of videos and so that is what i was able to do and so this is what I want to hit on a little bit for tonight. And so the book of the week means that I'm going to talk about how much it costs to run a business. And I understand a lot of times there's a lot of things that factor in this. And even when I'm going to show you all the different costs, most people will be like, Jason, all I need is bleach and a pressure washer. Well, no, you need way more than that. And so that's why you got to understand what all you cost you to run a business. Because a lot of times we think, man, if I could just, you know, if I'm working a $20 an hour job and all I need to do is just make, a, you know, if I could do $50 an hour, I'd be making really good money. And in the end, you're not making no money. And so this is why we need to charge three, four, and even $500 per hour. You know, when I first started, it was two to $300. And so with everything going up, the cost, you know, I used to get bleach for $1.79 a gallon and DJ's paying over $5 a gallon right now. So it has went up crazy high from when I was here versus, you know, five years ago. It's only been five years. And it went from $1.79 to over $5 a gallon. And so that is things that we have to think about with this on this Easter Sunday. I hope you all had an amazing Easter Sunday. I did. Went to church this morning um, with the family. Went to my in-laws. We had lunch. And so... And then I went out back. I have some brush around the around the house that um, I've been clearing out this one section over my hill that I have. I have five acres here, and I like maybe burning stuff. So I had three brush piles going at once. Um, I had piled up a bunch of stuff over the winter time to get rid of a bunch of leaves and all kinds of stuff. So that's been my day to day. Um, so I don't know if you all like doing that, but I personally like getting outside. Um, one thing that I'm going to come clean to you all, and I, I want you all to hold me accountable, and I want to hold myself accountable, and I want to hold you accountable if there's anything I can of I have not been so well with what I've been eating and where I'm at on my weight and exercise. And so tomorrow I'm going to start working out every day, one day or once a day at least um, is my goal. And, you know, I just read the book. Um, 
what's the name of the book? It was a great book, Thinking or something. And he talks about allow yourself for failure, right? And so I'm going to be able to, my goal is to get back down to where I was. I've gained some weight. I'm up to like 285 and I like to get back down to 250. And so that is something that I'm going to work on and make things happen to do it. So I'm telling on myself now, but that's just what, you know what, I, how can I help you guys grow your business and be accountable if I can't hold myself accountable for myself? So the book of the week this week is definitely a great book. I've recommended this book a lot in the past. I haven't recommended it in a while. But this is and the reason why I'm recommending this book is because it goes right along of knowing how much you need per hour. And so if you have not read this book, I'd highly recommend you to read this book. And it is called Profit First. Profit First is a great book. I highly recommend this book. Um, it's it's by Mike, Mike Kalowinski. It is definitely a great book. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to read this book and to, and to do what it says. Um, this is definitely a book that, you know, it, if you're not here to make profit and you're just here to to work uh, another job, then why be in this job, right? And so this is definitely a book that I would highly recommend. Um, and it, it makes you think about your cost and all of those things that go along with running a business. So this is definitely something that you need to know about your book here. So that's something that I would highly recommend you to read this book. It is a great book, 100% recommend this book. Before I get too far, if you want to join and go to an in-person training, I have one coming up. I have several, but the next one coming up is going to be in Portland, Oregon. It is going to be with Tim Cray. This is a hands-on class where you actually get to learn how to use the pressure washer you actually get to do the stuff and then i give a whole day on marketing and sales because that is what's going to grow your business and that's what's going to get you to be able to do the 300 dollars an hour so i would highly recommend you to check out kpw.com.com all right before I get going here, I want to see who all is in the house here. Jason, I appreciate all your advice. What's up, Seizure? Um, what's up, Mr. Tristan? Tristan he comes on every Monday night. He's an awesome young fella that is going to grow his business, going to hit half a million dollars this year. My job um, this last Friday was $359 per hour. That is awesome, Mr. Scott Ferguson. Um, from Palm Coast, Florida. What's up? Palm Coast, Florida in the house. Two people from Palm Coast, Florida. <laughs> um, as business, you must know your numbers and costs to see your business growth, cost, payroll. And we're going to hit on every one of those things here coming up here. Um, Mr. Rick Moosey, this is who I went and seen his rig and built his rig. I'll show a little bit of a picture coming up here later. Um, 567 for 10%. Thumbs up. Know your worth. We got Miss Trisha in the house. How are you doing? Hit the thumbs up button, she says. Good to see you, Jason. Glad you made it back home safely. What's up? Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you also. And Jeremy, how are you doing? All right. So I've actually made a slideshow here and that I'm going to go on to. This is going to, I've got quite a bit of slides because I want to make sure that you understand why you should charge $300 an hour. There's a reason why the cost of business. And so I'm going to break down a lot of costs. Now, this is not just, if you're a one man band, this is going to be some of the costs, but I'm actually going to throw in a little bit more of, if you want to grow your business to a half a million or a million, you need to start charging like you're there, right? You can't get there with by charging the prices you're charging now. And so this is why we're going to show you 
the pricing that you need to be able to hit your $300 an hour, $400 an hour. And be, here's the other thing. When we start adding all of these costs up, you got to remember that, you know, my goal for my guys were $1,500 a day. I needed one guy to do $1,500 a day so that I could be profitable, right? Because profit is not a bad word. Can people put in the comments here, profit is not a bad word. Please put that in the comments here because it's important that you understand that if you want to grow a business, you have to make profit. You have to make profit on top of paying your guys and paying you a salary is not considered profit. A lot of times people are like, I made $150,000 this year and I only have $50,000 in cost and I paid myself $100,000 and that means I made $100,000 in profit. That does not mean you made $100,000 in profit, right? You just paid yourself $100,000 because you did all the work. You did the, the, the reception, you did the technician, you did the sales guy, you, did, you have to Start looking at how much you're paying each one of those guys and understand how much profit you want to be able to grow your pressure washing business. And so as you're growing your business, you will see what all I'm going to show you here. I've got a lot of here that I wanted to kind of break it down so that way you can actually see it what I'm talking about. And so some of these numbers are skewed and that's fine, but I'm, I didn't get time to really tweak it where I wanted it to be at. So that's what I'm hitting here. Booked another $2,000 deck clean and stain job. Man, I love stain and steel experts. What's up from North Kansas City? Um, profit is not a bad word. Without profit, you're working for free. Profit is a beautiful word. That is true 100% for sure. So let me share my screen here and let's get this show on the road. So this is a rig that I built for Mr. Rick right here. Um, you can see we put a gas pump in right here that I'm right here. This is the gas pump, um, a 10 gallon or 11 gallon, 12, 10, 12 gallon um, gas roof pump. We got the mixer valves here. We have the remote up here at the top. Um, we got the remote up here in this area right here. We got a 275 gallon tank of water. We got a hundred gallon. Um, we got a hundred gallon um, bleach tank here. We got a five and a half gallon pressure washer back here that's coming in off of our line. We have a, um, a, a blade valve here to drain the tank. And also if you get bleach in your eyes or on you, you can clean it off of you. So that's why I put this little um, valve in here. Um, so this is where you can see all of the stuff that I did. Um, up here is the three-way ball valve. This here is how you're able to use the remote for um, for your um, for the gas roof pump. So that is how you're able to do that. Um, so that is what we are talking about here for um, what we have here in this thing here. So. The $300 pressure washing. All right, so let me see if I can get this working here and see if this is going to work. So I'm going to talk all the different costs of what it's going to cost you to run a pressure washing business. I know a lot of times I'm just like, you just need a pressure washer and some yard signs. And that's a great way to start. But if you want to grow, we got to look at what does it cost us to run a pressure washing business. So first off, let's just talk about the equipment cost, right? A pressure washer, $2,500. That's a cheap, that's a five gallon a minute pressure washer. If you're doing a, if you're doing an eight gallon a minute, make that four grand. If you're going to do a gas roof system, like I'm showing that make that another, uh, make that six grand. Um, that, that build that I built for, um, Rick, 
Just the equipment alone, he's probably in about twelve to thirteen thousand um, dollars. That's the cost of me going up there, spending the nights and stuff. He paid for my hotel, all my food, all the equipment, all all the little parts that we had to go to the store ten different times. And yes, we went to the store ten different times. And so you got to look at our cost here. Um, extension wands, you got different extension wands, hoses and nozzles. You're probably for the year, you're probably looking at, you know, two grand time you blow hoses, time you do all the stuff that you got to look at. Cleaning solutions, $500 ain't going to get you a kick in the bucket. $500, this might be per month, will be your bleach, right? So these are different costs, whether we're talking monthly or yearly. Um, protected gear. If you have employees, this cost is going to go up because you got to maybe get them shoes. You got to have the pit chopper. You got to have the goat. You got to have all of the different things. You got to have ladders. And so this could go up here. So this total is probably going to go up higher. Uh, again, I, sh I may work on this so I can kind of help this out. I'm looking at doing, I've got a sheet that I'm, that you can put your cost in you can put your um you can put your um your percent of profit that you want and it will tell you how much you need to charge at least to be able to do this so these are things that you have to think about of what you're doing um i am holding a class in cincinnati in april for pressure washing so if you go check out kpw train you can find it there all right, did I skip one more? Um, so equipment cost. So this is just the start of equipment. Um, again, this is not like a, a, this here is probably more, like I said, everything and even the surface cleaner. We didn't even put a surface cleaner on there. And, and like I said, Rick with the gas pump with that, he's looking at, you know, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. Time he puts the hoses on there, he, you're probably looking at about fifteen thousand dollars. Now, can you go buy your pressure washer and a downstream injector? Yes, you can start off cheaper than that, but you can also start off way more. You can go up and get you a thirty thousand dollar, a sixty thousand um, dollar stuff, and it's not going to make you no more money than anything else in the end there. So we got vehicle expenses. You can either go buy you a new one and you got a car payment or you can go be, be like my buddy DJ. He went and got a heck of a deal on a Ford. He paid $10,000 for, for a Ford. He's put new rear end in it. He's put new brakes on it. He's put uh, a new motor in it. He put new injectors in it. He's put... Um, He's put about $30,000 in this piece of crap $10,000 truck. So you can either buy a cheap truck and you're, break, and you're worried about breaking down, not getting there. He's already driving the Ford, so it probably won't get there anyway. Or you're going to put it in a payment. You're going to do one or the other on the vehicle cost. So, you know, I like the being paid off vehicle, but you may sometimes be better off to go buy a little bit better vehicle in the beginning than buy a piece of crap. I understand if you're just starting out and you have no money, then you have to make it work. Um, that is definitely something. Um, how big is the trailer? Um, it is not a trailer. You will need a trailer to haul that truck, that piece of crap truck around when it breaks down to get it back to the, uh, the shop. So that's something that you got to think about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ten thousand dollar junk um so these are things that you have to consider with our vehicle costs they're all going to cost you no matter what you are fuel how much fuel are you going to talking about are you pulling a trailer are you putting it in the back of the truck is it a diesel it might get better better fuel mileage but you're going to pay it on the end so it doesn't matter where you got to look at but you got to look at the fuel how much is you costing you in fuel how much is it costing your fuel for your equipment that's a totally different write-off when you're trying to figure out your fuel for your truck versus your equipment um, so these are things you know most trucks that are pulling a truck and trailer or pulling heavy weight you're probably only getting anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per gallon if you got a diesel and you get lucky, you might get up to 20, but you're probably not getting very much. You need commercial auto insurance for your vehicle. You really shouldn't have um, your, just your car um, expenses on there. You really should have your vehicle um, commercial auto insurance. So that way you're able to do that. Again, 
I had talked about your vehicle payments. Rather, you're going to do a loan on it, you're going to pay cash and put a bunch of money into it extra later on. You pick and choose. I know people that have done an old box truck, and they, you know, in they do it that way. Um, you can just pick and choose how you want to look at your vehicle expenses. Um, next, your insurance. You need general liability insurance. This is so that if you if something breaks, something happens, you're covered. You need workers' comp insurance. This is so that if you have employees, again, we're talking about growing and scaling a business. This is a cost that we got to look at. That's going to take away our profit, right? It's going to cost us rather it cost us a boatload up front and don't lie on this don't be like yeah i'm only gonna pay him twenty thousand dollars because if you lie on your workers comp they will come and audit you they come and audit you almost every year and if you're off you will pay it i've known people that have paid seventy five thousand dollars in workers comp because they said they were going to pay this and they actually paid way more and then they got hit with a seventy five thousand dollar workers comp insurance claim so you got to be honest on what it is equipment insurance i knew someone that bought a brand new trailer and it went home and it caught fire and guess what it was on him and he lost it he didn't have insurance on his equipment if you had insurance on it it could have got taken care of if someone steals it that's where you why you need to have this insurance. It is important that we have this insurance so that way if we break it, lose or not break it, but if we lose it, catch it on fire, something stupid, that's what we need to do. Again, I hit on this before, our fuel cost. Um, we need our truck, 15 miles a gallon. You know, how much are you spending? Pressure washer, you, you, this here is in two different tax brackets, right? This here comes out of, hey, this is how much is for the truck, and so they might do per mileage, and then this one you can actually subtract for um, how you do this. So this is another way that you are able to look at this here. Uh, what, um, uh, $10,000 junk, uh, use subcontractors and pay zero work compensation. The problem with 1099 and people is if they are technically an employee and they're really cracking down on this and you're trying to do them as a subcontractor and 1099 them and they don't have workers comp on them or they don't, they get hurt because you're trying to skirt around. If you telling them what to do and how to do it and they're using your truck, they're an employee and that's where it can get you in big trouble um, for doing it that way. My truck costs four hundred dollars to change the oil, tires, or twelve. See, these are all costs that we don't look at. Of I only charge three hundred dollars, and I'm glad you put that F bomb because it's true. There's a lot of cost that goes into these vehicles that you don't always look at and see what these costs are. Maintenance, talking about what the cost is, right? The oil change, um, air filter, uh, cleaning the nozzles, pump maintenance, hose inspection, pressure adjustments, right? These are all things that cost money that you have to do to keep us up here. And now let's go down the payroll. If you want to grow a business of where we need to be at, we need to look at all the things it's going to cost us. So if we're going to have a manager that's going to run everything, then, you know, $4,000 a month, that's $25 an hour or so. Um, you know, a senior technician, a technician, technician. So these are all costs that, you know, $12,000 is a lot of money to sit that's going to go out there. Um, so these are things that, you know, this obviously isn't going to be a $10,000 month or you're going to be broke. This, if you're going to have three technicians, I'm hoping you're doing over a hundred grand a month. And yes, you can do a hundred thousand dollars pressure washing business. Um, a month with three rigs you can probably you could possibly do it with two rigs it might be a lot but you can definitely do a hundred thousand dollars with three rigs and so that's where you should be at and how do you get that well if you let's just say if you're at um easy math two thousand dollars let's just say let's just go back to our fifteen hundred dollars a day because that's where we're say 15 that gives me five hours at 300 bucks an hour right so that gives me my 1500 dollars a day if i've got 1500 dollars a day times that by three is 4500 and then we times that 
by um, 20 because that's 20 working days and that puts us at $90,000. So that's gonna get you to a $90,000 with an average truck of $1,500 a day. That's kind of, you know, that we wanna be at more $2,000 and you may have some people that $2,000, you may have some lower, but that's kind of why we're at that $1,500 a day to get us to a $90,000 month, right? Now, $90,000 subtract, you know, $15,000 worth of labor, that's not too bad. So that's kind of where we're, where we want to be at and how we want to look at those. You got to pay tax, you know, a $25 an hour employee is more than $25 an hour. You got to pay social security tax, Medicare tax, uh, unemployment tax. Um, a lot of times your worker comp is out of this. So our $25 employee just became a $35 employee is what it's costing us. So again, um, your salary, your salary doesn't include in the profit, right? How much are you getting paid? Are you being a technician? Are you being the manager? Are you being the op? You know, where are you in the, in there? So these are things to look at. Um, of this is that a one-person truck or a two-person truck that's a great question and we actually talked about this in mentorship the other day if I can get $1,500 a day out of one truck but I can get $2,000 a day out of two people on a truck is it better to do $2,000 or is it better to do a thousand or $1,500 where is that sweet spot maybe you can only get $1,800 with two people well I might not want that second person because now I got to pay all the extra tax on him and all the other things and I'm really losing money and I'm not gaining any by having that other person in. And then we go down to, do you rent an office place? I would, If you are in business and you have employees, I would highly recommend having office space. So that way your motorcycle don't get um, stolen out of your garage like I've seen a pressure washer um, guys did. Um, stuff gets stolen out of their house. You got your kids there. You do, might not have the best employees or maybe they do something stupid. So that's why it's good to have an office place. All your marketing, are you got your marketing, your software, your jobbers, your um, customer factor, your um, your response bid, right? There's another $500,000 going a month out the door. Communication expenses, cell phones, um, company cam, all travel expenses. So these are all costs of what it costs to run a business. So when I see people that say, you know, I hit a $100,000 business or a $100,000 month, how much did it cost you to get to $100,000? And are you still profitable? Because a lot of times I see people, they'll hit a $100,000 month and they didn't make no money because all the money went right back out the door. And so we don't want to watch them. And then we come down to the cleaning chemicals. You need bleach, you need all this, uh, you need EBC, you need all of those stuff, protective gear for all your employees that you got safety gloves and eye protection and hats and uniforms so you don't look like a bunch of hobos out there that have bleach stains all over you so other supplies you know um who knows what those supplies are there could be anything um you will be surprised of what things are and in marketing you know online advertising the hosting of the website the social media advertising um yard signs and 300 you know yard signs should be 300 per week so that way you're putting out 100 yard signs a week. And yes, if you have three, four employees, you're still putting out yard signs. You're still doing all these other things and you're pulling all the marketing levers. You're not just doing one marketing level, lever at this point. You're going to do all of the marketing levers. You know, is there any licenses? Um, a lot of times you need a business license and, it, and this works into wherever cities you are in. Whatever cities you work in, a lot of times you got to get a business license for those cities um, and I've gotten almost shut down because I didn't have a business license I did it was old but I was able to show it to them um, 
contractor's license. If you're in Florida, you have to have some a special contractor's license. It's not really a pressure washing, but it is a contractor's license that you have. If you do a lot of commercial work and if you're doing $90,000, you're probably getting a water meter. And so that's kind of the water meter um, that you're going to get. Environmental permit. You're probably not going to need this, but um, some people I know get bleach. And so you have to give the bleach things. And then insurance and if you go into people's houses you're going to need to be bonded so these are all things that cost you money that you think if you're going to do any specialized training if you got any certifications for your people the number one thing you should be doing is educating yourself the best investment you can do is invest in yourself and i know a lot of times we don't want to hear that but and there i just watch youtube and that's fine but I'm just going to let you know that usually when you invest in yourself, usually you can 10x whatever you invest in yourself. So if you're doing just YouTube and free and you 10x it, then you're still at free. If you 10x a $10,000 training and you 10x it, now you made $100,000 off that one training. So that's how I look at it personally for this. Um they're talking about making us get pesticide license. Yes, in Michigan, they're having to get their pesticide license. They got a cease and desist list um, for getting their pesticide license. So that'll be another $100 a month, $100 or $200 a year you have to get for every employee that you have. So that's another thing that's coming out. Um, accounting services. If you don't have an accounting, you're stupid. I'm sorry to say that, especially if you're doing this kind of money on 90 to 100. If you're, if you're hitting $90,000 a month and $90,000 a month and you do that, that's a million dollar business, right? And so you definitely should have a good accountant to make sure. You may need legal advice. You may need, you know, other all kinds of stuff out there. You know, if you go out there and you want to try to rebrand yourself, you're looking at ten to fifteen thousand dollars to have someone rebrand everything for your brand. So that's something that you're looking at that you may want to do that makes you look good. You should have an oh crap fund um, because there's going to be oh craps. You know, like I said, DJ had a $30,000 truck that he got, $10,000 truck that he put $30,000 in. And so you should have this. You should have three to six months worth of operating expenses. And you might say, well, that's never. Well, I'm going to tell you something here. Did you know that most of the country doesn't work in the wintertime? Now, I'm not saying that you can't lay your people off, but I want to let you know that you got to make sure that you can get through those three to six months, right? You can get through January, February, and March because you might not make no money in March. If you're in this area, you might not make no money in January and February. So you got to have a oh crap fund to get through those uh, months. And then at the end of the day, this is the most important thing, your profit. You know, I know people that have made million dollar businesses, $1.5 million business, and they make $80,000 at the end of it. That's an $80,000 headache is what they got. You know, a lot of people worry about the, the top line and the bottom line, this line here, the profit. This is the most important thing about your business. Most people don't have a clue what their profit is. I hate to say it. Most people don't have a clue what their profit is. They have no clue what their numbers are. Everything I've been talking about here, nobody they have no they keep no track of it. Money in, money out, and I got some left over, I must be doing good. If you're that type of business, let me know what in the comments. Don't be bashful. I know a bunch of you are in here. If you just money in, money out, and I got some left over, I must be doing good. Um, put that down in the comment. That's me because I understand that we can get through that way, but we're running a business to be successful, right? I want you to be successful. I want you to thrive. I want you to have financial freedom when you're doing money in money out. And I don't know what, as long as I got some left over, I must be doing good. You don't understand business and you will be struggling through times if you're not careful. So 
make sure that you understand that this bottom line is the most important thing. Now, this does not count you giving yourself money through the year. So, you know, you have to, by tax laws, you have to give yourself a reasonable pay. So if you're paying yourself fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year through salary, through whatever, so you're not paying a lot of taxes on it, and then from there is your profit, right? Hey, I'm going to do an owner's draw, and that's going to be profit. That's why I was telling you about profit first, right? It tells you to put 5% or 10% into profit every time. So that way, you know that you are profitable because there's so many people will have this big profit account and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to just pay. I got money to do marketing and I'm going to just put that into marketing. Well, now profit went from profit to running the business expenses. And now that's not profit no more. Now we're just feeding the machine back into this here versus of, of wherever it might be at. Um, covering expenses and valuing your time, right? This is why we charge $300. This is why we charge $400 an hour. It's not because all we are are a pressure washer. If you're just selling pressure washing services, you won't get the three to four hundred dollars an hour. You won't get it. I promise you that. And so this is why you have to look at valuing your time and doing it. And then if you're renting a space, you know, you're renting a sports storage space, you're running, you know, I had a uh, 8,500 square foot um, place. It cost me $3,000 or $2,500 in rent, plus the electricity and water. By the time you're adding it up, you're at $4,000 a month just in utilities and all the crap that goes along with our business. You know, you got to pay the sewer costs. You got to pay everything. You got to pay telephone, internet. All of these costs are going to come out of that um, cost. So this is why it is important to understand how much does it cost you to run your business. And a lot of people don't understand this and don't know how much it costs them to run their business. And so I wanted to break this down. I knew this was going to be kind of a long one, but this is why we charge the three to five hundred dollars an hour for pressure washing. You know, some of you think that you're just a pressure washer. You're a business owner and you should be a legit business owner that is successful. I don't want you going out of business next year. There's tons and tons of rigs out there right now for sale that people started a pressure washing business. They got bought on some equipment. They didn't spend no money in marketing. They didn't know any of their numbers and they go out of business and they will tell you they're going, they're not going out of business. They've got different plans or we're deciding to do something different. That means you didn't plan and understand your numbers so that you can grow and be successful. That's the whole purpose of this. This, this isn't by this equipment, by this core. I don't care if you do or not. You got to understand this here, if you go into a coaching program, this is what they're going to give you. You've got to understand your numbers. You've got to know what your numbers are. Because if you don't know what your numbers are, you'll be just like all the other ones and go out of business. And I get it. You can tell me all you want that you can't get it in your area. I promise you, you can get it in your area. The only reason why you can't get it in your area is because you do not believe that you can get $300 an hour. You do not believe that people will pay $400 an hour. Right now, DJ, his his minimum cost is like $379 for him to show up for a 1,000 square foot house, right? A 1,000 square foot house is almost $400 for him to show up to do in about 30 minutes because a thousand square foot house with a gas pump takes you about 30 minutes to do the house. And so these are things that you have to think about as you're wanting to grow your business. And I want you to grow your business. I want you to be successful. I come on here every Sunday night, even on an Easter Sunday night. And there's 
um, 60 people in here that want to learn and grow their business. And the reason why I do this is so that you will grow your business. I don't want you going out of business. If you want to go watch other people and, and go follow them and they have never done it themselves or they're about to go out of business themselves, then go do it. If you want to call around all your competitors and charge what they're charging, they're going out of business. Why would I charge what they're charging when they're going out of business? You know, I had lots of conversations with Rick this week, and he has ADD, and he will make you want to drive your head up against the wall sometimes because we like to aggravate each other. And so the one thing that I love about him, though, is, is he learned from a guy that is in Colorado and in Denver, and he, he started charging like he did. And then he started listening to me, and then he started raising his prices. And now he's getting two, three hundred dollars for a gutter clean out, right? And the other guy's like, I can't believe you're getting that much. And so this is why it is important that we understand what you're worth. How much are you worth? How much do you do you want to grow? Um, you know, Rick's goal is this year is to do last year he did three hundred thousand dollars. This year, Rick's goal is to do $600,000 in a pressure washing, gutter cleaning business. And so, guess what? You can do this. It's not rocket science. Is it going to be easy? No. I've never said it's easy. It's not easy. There's days that you will want to pull your freaking hair out. You know how many times I heard Rick say, I'm just not cut out for this. I'm like, dude, you did $300,000 last year. You know how many people would love to do $300,000? How many people in this room right now tonight would love to do $300,000? If you would love to do $300,000 this year, Put in the comment, that's me. I want to see how many people put in the comments, that's me. I want to do $300,000. This guy, Rick, he's old, 56. Not getting on too old of people because I'm not too far around it. But 56, 57 years old and hates, he loves computers. He hates computers. Like he's ready to throw a stick to them on all the time. But I wanted to show you that you don't have to be some amazing person to get $300,000. His goal in 2024 is $600,000. He doubled what he did last year, and now he wants to double it again this year. And so that's what I'm talking about. That's why it's important that you understand and you want to grow your business. Again, this is not about Jason. You're just, you're just throwing fluff out there. I'll tell you right now, there's people on here tonight. I've already seen them on here. They're doing 800,000, half a million. If David Hamill's on here, he jumps on here. He did $1.2 million last year. You can run a pressure washing business. Don't tell me this bull crap that you can't get it in your area because the guy in David Hamill's area, I've heard someone say, you can't get that in my area. And I'm like, really? I know a guy that's getting $1.2 million in your area, but yet you're telling me you can't? What's the difference between him and you? There's something different. And a lot of it is, is you don't believe in yourself that you're worth three, four, five hundred dollars $500 an hour. A good CPA will be your investment. You know, I've I got my CPA that I recommend to a lot of people. Um, that one guy was going to end up paying thirty thousand, and he if you don't have a good CPA, you can be spending a lot of money that you shouldn't be spending money in. Um. Also, multiple permits or license for different counties and cities that may require you to have 35 to 300, depending on location. And that is correct. If you work in 10 different cities, technically you're supposed to have 10 different business licenses for all of those there. I spent over $15,000 and that was before the season kicked off. Don't forget if you ever decide to sell your business, what it should look like on paper. Yep. Um, that's me. Thank you for the super chat. Hey folks, let let getting on late getting on. Hope everyone is doing well. 
Uh, know your daily expenses too. Absolutely. You know, I just kind of hit a general expenses. What are some of your dailies? Gas, all those things that, you know, come up in year. I am in my first, first this year guy started last July, not worried about the competition, but it's hard to wrap my brain around changing more than I do because charging more than I do because of quote shoppers. They're not quote shoppers. They're not your correct. Um, they're not your correct um, customers, right? You are targeting not your customers. You need to see who is your customer. What do they look like? Name that customer. So when you're talking to that customer, then you you will pick it. Your close rate is not. If your close rate is 50, 60 percent, you're close, right? A lot of these guys. I've got a guy in here right now that I seen him on here. He did eight hundred thousand dollars, and his close rate's like thirty percent. Jason Hefner, thirty percent. DJ Lyle, thirty percent. Right. So that means you get seven no's for every three yeses, but you will make way more money and work way less, and that's the goal. And your profit will be way higher in the end when you think about it that way. For me to just do a bid in person, it cost me a hundred and thirty, and then go back to do the job, it cost me three hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars set up, then you should raise your prices. You should be at three hundred. Never charge what your commander charge. Each business expenses are different. Wash my lawn accounts. Looking to expand. Thanks for the show. Never told what your competition charge due to the fact that businesses have different expenses. And a lot of times your competitors don't know what their expenses are. They have no clue what it costs to run a business. Um, going from $250 to $350 minimum. $700 gutter cleaning in an hour. Gutter cleaning is severely undercharged. 55. Rick said he's 55. Sorry, I got his age wrong. That's me. Oh, hell, that's me. <laughs> Bunch of you are saying that. Uh, this has been the best year yet, and spring is just starting. You know, I don't know what's going on, but I've heard that from a lot of people, um, Littles. Um, I've heard that from a lot of people. I, one of my guys in my mentorship, his best um, month last year was July. That was his best month out of all, the whole year. And he hit within like $500 or $1,000 already this month, past month in March. And uh, he took like a week off or a couple days off. So, I, and DJ, he's killing a bunch of commercial work. He's at like... He's hitting fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of commercial work out there. He's put out several bids and getting them. And so there's a lot of people I know that is doing very well this year, starting out of the get go. Yep, that's me. Yep, yep. Me, me, me. He wants to do three hundred thousand. Sean wants to do three hundred thousand. Um, Pig wants to do three hundred thousand. Um, I'm not cheap and won't bow down to customers on price bidding. My business is worth and quality on 10 years of experience comes at price. Uh, Sterling Wash wants to do 300000 I want to. Goal is seven figures. Um, that's me. I want to make 300000 Um He wants to go from ghetto to 300 to ghetto to bougie. Um <laughs> Jamie always talks about he wants to get out of the ghetto. And you can. You just got to find your right customers. Um, and so that's what's awesome about it. And then eight and then on. I was going to say, why start at, stop at seven? Uh, what is the percent of commercial and percent of residential? Um, it depends on what you're going for. You know, if you really want to start getting your high-end job, you're in commercial. Um, if you want to hit seven figures, you're probably, it would be real hard to do it in residential only. Um, your commercial jobs is where you really start getting into more of your money. I want to break six figures my first year. What's, what's your plan to get to that? 
right? What is, what are you going to do for marketing? How many yard signs are you going to put out? How many Facebook posts are you going to do? How many LinkedIn? Those are all factors and key KPIs of what you need to know to be able to hit that six figures your first year. My goal is 500 this year. I'm going to double what I made last year. So he did 250. Um, very little you won't do. <laughs> Um, everything gets dirty no matter where you are at. That is 100% true. I'm going to be like Rick, the $600,000 club. And if you want to know where people hang out in the $600,000 club, they join kingofpressurewash.com and every Monday night they do what I say and they come on the Monday night Zoom call and they learn, they grow from each other. Um, that's where they do it from. So we all have a Zoom call on Monday night, and that's where we're hitting those people get to hear that. We have an outstanding CPA with one man band and a truck. That means you're very profitable. Mr. Daniel, I love to do 300000 Not everyone, but a lot of people lie about their numbers. I agree 100%. I see this a lot. You know how I, I know usually when they're lying to me? Go look at their equipment. Go look at how many people they have. Go see what they're doing. I do a million dollars, and they got this piece of crap rig. It's like, no, you don't. 150 this year, triple what I did last year. Maybe not eight this year, but better watch out. Here we come. You got to have a vision and a plan to be able to do it. Right, it's back to think and grow rich. If you can believe, if you can look at it, put a picture on it, put a date on it, put a vision to it, you'll get to it. Barry, it's it's a joking expression, just laughing. No restrictions on you. Uh, wow. How are local ads doing this year? I have a ton of calls for window cleaning. Um, they're doing pretty well for some people. I know they're doing pretty well. That's crazy. Got another new guy starting in the morning, and his brother will be working for us in a couple weeks. This will make me five employees at it this year. My clientele is far away from me. How can I make them understand I am worth more amount over the phone? I can't wrap my head around how I can sound so convincing on the phone. That's my struggle. It's not just on the phone, right? What does your website look like? What does your Facebook look like? How are you marketing to them? If your website isn't very good, then you're probably going to be hard to overcome what you need to overcome. So those are things that you got to think about of what you need to overcome to be able to look at what they look at you. Because if you're selling pressure washing, you're not going to get very much, right? We got to sell what they need. Um, and a lot of times it's not pressure washing. It's I'm going to lose my insurance because my they saw the black streaks on my roof. Do I need a roof clean or do I need my insurance so my house gets on fire? That's what we're selling it. That's how we're able to get the higher price. 211000 in 2023, close rate at 22%. I spent $4,000 on equipment. Um, get your quotes high. Quote them virtually this way. You always win if something comes up. Rick, I'm 51. 70 degrees in February. That's crazy. I'm one month into business and only gotten two jobs so far off of my yard signs. That's why you got to put them out a lot. Um, economy is in great shape. Therefore we shall, should have a great year. Sterling, come wash with me a week, brother. We can make some good content. I know I need to come down there with you. My goal first year is to have at least one job a day. Is that bad? Nope. You got to start somewhere. My goal I've gotten 100 yard signs and 100 postcards. Your yard signs will do way better than the postcards. How do I get on the Zoom call? You join King of Pressure Wash. And from there, um, in there under marketing, it's called the Marketing Zoom Call or Marketing um, Marketing Mondays is what I'm calling it. Uh, what's your goal down? What's your goal down? I'm going to make it, if not back 
to the A or back to GE. My website got me residential job from an 81 year old woman last week. <laughs> uh, um, again, if you all want to go check out King of Pressure Wash, that's where it is. Also, um, I'm having an in-person training in Washington or in Portland, um, Portland, Oregon in two weeks. There is a couple spots open. This is a hands-on class. You get to learn how to do the pressure washing. Um, you get to spray the pressure washer. Um, and then day two is all about marketing, how to get more jobs, how to do it, um, how to use AI. I don't know how to do that stuff. Well, I show you how to do everything of what you can do to grow your business. Um, I see you, little pressure wash. Uh, plan on coming to a Christmas light trainings. I do have some Christmas light trainings. You can go check out christmaslights.io. Um, .io and there has my Christmas light trainings if you, all you want is Christmas lights. There is definitely a lot of things uh, for Christmas lights. It's a great way to make a lot of money doing Christmas lights. Tristan, love your videos. Needing some coaching. Man. Um, but other than that, I hope that you all have an amazing week this week. Um, thank you all for coming out on Easter. Um, I know there, I didn't know if I'd have anybody show up or not. Um, Portland need to teach a class to clean up the drugs and trouble there. Well, I don't know if I can do, maybe we give them enough bleach that might clean it up. <laughs> bleach kills everything. Don't you know that? <laughs> uh, yeah, bleach kills everything. Um, but other than that, I hope y'all have an amazing night and I hope y'all have, if there's anything I can do to help you out, let me know. Um, leave a comment down in here after I'm done. The other thing too is if you want to know when I go live, I do text the word, if you text the word King, K-I-N-G to 859-696-1101, um, King, I will, um, I will text you. And if you have any questions or you want me to help you with anything you can also text me at that too might take me a little bit to get back to you a day or so but i will get back to you um but you can text me there also so that way i can help you out in any way that i can help you out because my goal is to make you all successful my goal is to make you be able to do things so that you can grow your pressure washing christmas lights business I don't want you to be, I don't want you to fail. I want you to succeed. That is my goal for you. Um, so that is definitely something that you need to look at doing. And so other than that, I hope you all have a great night and we'll see you all later.